the G Triple SA Senior Boys National Championship starting this Wednesday at 8 p.m. live on Cable 12. The Prime Minister says he can still be swayed on value-added tax. The opposition criticizes the Prime Minister's mid-year budget statement, a top national security official defending the commissioner and crime stats, plus a look at La Playa Mansion. Those stories and a whole lot more coming up. I'm Bonnie Toot, and NB12 starts now. Less than five months before the proposed implementation of value-added tax, Prime Minister Perry Christie suggested today he can be persuaded by private sector professionals on whether VAT is an appropriate tax and if 15% is the appropriate rate. However, he says that's only if they can come up with another viable form of taxation to significantly boost revenue. But for the time being, Christie says government is moving forward with VAT and has retained an American firm. If they could come to me and say I could raise two, three hundred million this way, and I look at it, and that's a way that's not harmful to the economy, no problem. So yeah, you can be persuaded. To yes. Be, yes. I can be persuaded if they are able to find yes. a formula other than what we are now doing. Yes, I, I have an open mind on that. Speaking with reporters in the foyer of the House of Assembly today, Christie said the government currently has in place all that is necessary to bring about that as early as July 1st. However, in light of calls by the private sector to introduce another form of tax or to apply that at a lower rate, Christie says he has provided the Coalition for Responsible Taxation with information on the country's need for revenue so their consultants can put forth recommendations. And what if they find a better alternative to VAT? The sooner we do it, the better. So a part of the process of implementation, for example, if let's say they decided that income tax was better or some corporation tax was better, or some form of sales tax was better, some payroll tax, whatever it is, um, it has to be implemented, and implemented in the shortest possible time. However, he says the coalition's consultants must have internationally accepted credentials. In the meantime, Christie says government has retained consultants of its own from a well-known American firm. That the government itself had retained a group and that group was preparing a final report for us. And their remit was to examine all that has taken place, every argument that has been put forward, analyze it, and make recommendations to the government. They are a very, very well-known American firm um, who have had major um, political presence in the U.S. government. Christie says he expects the American firm's report to be submitted in a timely manner. He concluded that whatever his government decides to do, he will come to the Bahamian people. He says that must take place well before July 1st, which he called D-Day. As a government, I'm still prepared to listen. And in this case, I'm prepared for you to go ahead and do a final report. I'm doing one, and that we'll sit and discuss it with them and then we'll make a decision on moving ahead. Prime Minister Christie also addressed the possible regulation of web shops, which remains a controversial issue more than a year after the failed gambling referendum. Quite frankly, he says government would need very compelling reasons to go that route. But there has been no formal consideration by government to regulate numbers houses in the country. Christie was responding to Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkom's calls for government to tax web shops, which he says make a tremendous amount of money. No, the government has not brought it up. It's not come up as a government. You know, ministers, uh, minister, the minister of tourism, Wilshkom, has spoken publicly. The, minister, the chairman of the gaming board, Mr. Rollins, has spoken publicly. And I've spoken my regrets that if I had to do it all over again. But, other, but there's no, no formal consideration of the government. Christie says he's heard the argument that by taxing web shops, government can introduce VAT at a lower rate. But he says he's mindful of last year's referendum results. We've had a result on a referendum, but I'm mindful of that, me, personally. 
and that I have to have some compelling reasons for me to examine the subject that you're talking about. And so, you know, I, I don't know what, question, what you're looking for, but at the end of the day, um, we're going to make the right decisions. And whatever those decisions are, all right, they may affect web shops, operations. Uh. Christie says he's had very encouraging conversations with religious leaders whom he says understand the economic challenges his country now faces and the need for additional sources of revenue. However, he says how they can plan to fix that problem is still being considered. Christie's comments came shortly after he presented government's mid-year budget statement in the House of Assembly today. As the economy grows and unemployment decreases, the Prime Minister told parliamentarians the future looks very bright for the Bahamas. He forecasted thousands of new jobs in the near future. Thanks to a joint hotel venture and call center on Grand Bahama, the construction of a five-star hotel in Bimini, $90 million expansion project on San Salvador, construction of a five-star resort on Eleuthera, and an expansion project at Albany. He also discussed his government's plan to rein in spending, noting that the GFS deficit is down to $238 million, down from $295 million recorded during the 2012-2013 fiscal period. He also noted they expect the deficit to come in on target at $447 million, while government debt is expected to come in as forecast at the time of the last budget. But opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis wasn't impressed. The Prime Minister has proven himself to be a vacillator and contradictor. But I was even more surprised. He spoke a lot about jobs, but I did not hear him <laughs> mention anything about bohemian ownership. I think as bohemians and young bohemians, we want to hear how do they, how do they fit in this economic pie as opposed to just jobs. We are looking forward to opportunities and ownership. Meantime, East Grand Bahama MP Peter Turnquest says the Christie administration is long on promises and short on delivery. As for Christie's suggestion that he could be persuaded by the private sector on VAT, Turnquest says there is only so much businesses can do between now and the July 1st implementation date. I'm saying that this government is a soon and near government, meaning that projects are always near to fruition. We'll believe it when we see it. Uh, again, um, they are all focused on foreign direct investment, which again is important. However, uh, we need to, s to understand the linkages and to ensure that at the end of the day that the Bahamian uh, economy will benefit and that Bahamians will be empowered. Well, Minister of State for National Security Keith Bell today seeking to clarify the way crime statistics are gathered and classified in the wake of controversy surrounding recently revealed discrepancies between statistics derived from the police force and Princess Margaret Hospital's records. Christina McNeil was there as Bell reaffirmed his confidence in the police force. The Bahamas has a place for you, like it does for me. So Commission ain't going nowhere. Now you really should record that. I ain't going nowhere. Where do you want me to go? The credibility and integrity of Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade coming to the fore today after what some have described as an attack on his character and his office. Greenslade addressing students, alumni and faculty at the College of the Bahamas Crime Roundtable this morning, emphasizing the importance of credibility. Minister of State for National Security Keith Bell using the opportunity to stand behind the commissioner and the recent crime statistics that have caused such controversy in some quarters. And I think that coming here this morning, the commissioner coming here this morning, he had a heavy heart. He felt bad what was done and I understand his pain because if you say that the commission is wrong, then in fact you're saying the entire police force. The commission doesn't gather statistics by himself. Over the last two years, there has been a direct attack on the character, the personal character of commission of police, which I believe is poor, which I believe is unacceptable by persons in positions who know better. It's as simple as that. And recently, this debate about the statistics being different in the hospital, that is the shootings and the stabbings, and the police statistics being different, is another attack on the Office of Commissioner of Police. And I hold the commissioner out to be an honest, God-fearing man of, high, of, of the highest integrity.
According to data provided by police, 197 people were shot last year. However, PMH emergency room statistics show that 278 people were treated for gunshot-related injuries in 2013. Our news team asked Greenslade about the police statistics on Sunday. He stood by the figures he presented earlier this year and said police statistics and hospital data will never be the same. Bell underscored that point today. When you look at crime statistics, I brought a form with me this morning from the Royal Bahamas Police Force, which is called a medical form, a, pl a police hospital form. It's a simple form. Whenever somebody is shot or someone is stabbed or someone is injured in any way or the other and they report the matter to the police or it comes to the attention of the police, whether from hospital authorities or any other authority, the person, the police would send this form with that person to the hospital. The police would hold that incident as an incident that is reported to the police. In terms of its categorization, you would, we would have to wait, the police would have to wait on what the, doc, what the doctor puts on this form. I, am, I was completely, not somewhat surprised, but completely bewildered that professionals would have gone out there and deliberately deceived the Bohemian public. Greenslade maintains that the police force's crime statistics accurately reflect the level of serious crime in the country. However, cardiothoracic and vascular surgeon Dr. Dwayne Sands, who provided the hospital figures, says the gap between the figures is too wide to ignore. Reporting for NB12, I'm Christina McNeil. And still to come on NB12, the story of how a girl given a second chance at life is giving back. Find out more after this break.